thought we could maybe start with just like our experience growing up with Star Wars, since we are kind of in an odd bracket. Like we're not really old enough for the original when they came out, but we're not really quite young enough to where the prequels got us all the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's a. I guess I want to start out. So I was I was out drinking with uh, friends the other day, and this guy that I know came up. He was he was drinking with, and came out that um, he had never seen Star Wars, and which like fucking how? Yeah, yeah. And so Zach, you know Zach. He uh, he was he was like, oh my god, you have to see it. And I was sitting there, and I was thinking, well, do you? This guy's this guy's <laughs> yeah, exactly. This guy's almost twenty eight years old. Why does he need to see Star Wars? And so I, I put the question to Zach and everyone else I saw for the rest of the night, and it got it got instantly very heated because what I would say would be try to explain to someone, an adult that has not seen Star Wars and explain why they need to see Star Wars. And the answer I kept getting was it's the hero's journey and just kind of platitudes of that. And I was Well, yeah, like, but also not... by the time you're 28, you know of the hero's journey. You've seen it a million times. Also, you don't have to be exposed the, to it. But also hearing about the hero's journey, why would that inherently make me want to watch this? Like, that's not... Well, that's the wrong that, angle to tackle it from. It, it basically, you take it from the sci-fi angle and just be like, look, it's in space, it has cool special effects, it, it's iconic characters, blah, blah, blah. That's what you would want to say to be like, that's why you need to see it. That's true, but that's not... That's And that's what I think gets to the deep point of star wars that it's so deeply rooted in nostalgia and just the assumption oh, and that childhood it's, it's just and child yeah and childhood and it's just it's always been there for you you don't know a world without star wars so you don't understand how to look outside of it oh yeah absolutely and uh, again if you had put that question to me the other night i would have been yeah. like well yes of course I, I think you should see it because i really enjoy these movies but i can't really say yeah. that you need to see it like i don't think it's gonna hurt your life by not seeing it at this point if you had seen it when you were a child like yes you definitely should see it when you're a child that's the perfect time yeah like seeing it now i can't i can't say anyone that hasn't seen it as a child would really enjoy it but i also i can't look outside of it either (laughs) yeah they might (laughs) but i mean they are good movies for the most part but I mean, yeah, it's going into it at 28, like, yeah, I would completely understand if you just didn't get it or didn't like it. Yeah, see, and that's, 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 and we're here to talk about the new trailer, since obviously that's what everyone's talking about in the new movie. And we want, and I ke- uh, you know, page likes and looks. <laughs> yes, please, please click on this. Please, multiple, we're begging you, times. we're begging oh you. Oh my god, <laughs> we, we're we talking about now. Star Wars. Come on, people! Star Wars. We're finally, we're finally getting the stuff you enjoy. Yeah, we're finally Damn pandering it. to you, motherfuckers. <laughs> you bastards. But we're talking about the new Star Wars, and I keep running into people that are so excited for it, and I can't. I also try and kind of present the same question: like, why? Why are you excited for it? What do you think this movie is going to be? Well, see, that's, that's the problem. Be... They're they are already. I think they're so excited because maybe most most people were so let down by the prequels or whatever. Yeah. Or they're just building it up so much to where they're every single one of them is going to be disappointed. There is no way, that's... even if it is a great movie, even if it is you know a really good movie, better than a lot of people might think it'll be. It, it people are putting their expectations so high, it's never going to be everything to everybody like they oh, want yeah. it to be. And that's and. That's my answer. Is it's gonna be capable? It's J.J. Abrams. It's gonna be a capable oh, yeah. film. It'll it's be an be... enjoyable popcorn action movie. Yeah, but it's not gonna be Star Wars because the Star Wars you are thinking of is not a tangible object anymore. It's 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 like it's this it's part a of you. This, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like a feeling you have almost. Like it's just this. Like I said, they were trying to get people to explain why someone should watch Star Wars. They go to the hero's journey, which is not. A not a reason to see a movie. <laughs> no, exactly. It's... I mean that that's like a concept that again, if you're you know older than a child, like you've seen it a million <laughs> times in pop culture and movies and TV and books, like you know what the hero's journey is. Like that's not a reason to see this movie. No, and and it kind of. I mean, I guess we'll we'll talk about. It. I mean, the prequels are so horrible. But another thing that I came across was I was listening to some podcast the other day. I can't remember, but the guy ended it. 
with like, oh, and here's my little nephew talk, like t- explaining what he liked about the new Star Wars trailer. And it's just a little kid's voice. And he's just like, and then he has a lightsaber, and then it comes out one end, and then it comes out the other two ends. Like, it's some expl- explanation like that. And it occurred to me... That's who this movie our, is for. <laughs> yeah, are our, our, all Star Wars just inherently for children? Because now we're getting a generation that likes the prequels, and maybe that's because those prequels speak to that generation. Like, the fast action, the... The overloaded screen. Oh yeah, Maybe they and we're enjoy that. we're right on that fence because we're not quite yeah. old enough. We weren't alive when the original trilogy came out, and we were already like teenagers when the new trilogy came out. So like we were like twelve. Yeah, well, yeah, we were about to be teenagers. So like I, yeah. it still like appealed to us somewhat, but we were old enough to to realize what was going on and realize the parts that sucked. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll admit the the Star Wars fan sin, which is I enjoyed the prequel the first like two times. Well, I, I enjoyed oh, yeah. it a lot the first time I saw it. The second time I was like, this doesn't quite feel right. The third time, these are all in theaters. I was like, oh, oh, it's yeah. starting to wear. Like I don't. And then the fourth I, time, I was it. like, why do I keep doing this to myself? <laughs> <laughs> why do I keep giving so much money to this movie? Uh, I need the action figures. And how, what was your final total? I think I saw it like fucking five times. I think I got to four. Yeah. I think that was. I think that's where I tapped out. Yeah, I I, I went one more. I just I think the fifth one was just like, well, let me just be sure. Let me go back. Maybe I, I've just been confused the past couple of times. Yeah, and then so we do. You get the first one, and then we grow two years. We're now fourteen, fifteen, I guess fourteen, and we get the next one. Yeah, and well, that's what I'm saying. I think I think the first one with Phantom Menace, we were just right at the cusp like we were 12 so like i think we were the very breaking point of what that movie was marketed to like we were at the very edge of it so i think that's what happened and also it was a new star wars movie coming out for us like that that was what was exciting that's why i saw it multiple times in the theater before it started sitting in i was like this movie isn't that good like there are parts i still liked about it but yeah, it started to wear on me after a while, but I think yeah, it was just I mean, it... a new movie for us, because even in 97, when we were like 10, and the special editions came out to theaters, I saw every one of those in the theater, and I was ecstatic. Oh, yeah, I didn't even, like, I guess I didn't notice most of the changes anyway, just because I was young, and I was just fucking excited to see Star Wars in the movie theater. Yeah, I knew, like, I had kind of kept up, I can't, uh, but I knew a couple of the scenes, like, where Han goes and talks to Jabba. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of strange. obvious. Uh, yeah. And and again, but and they didn't really bother me at the time. I think it wasn't until no, not like, at all. that following Christmas or birthday where I actually got the special editions on VHS and started watching them yeah. constantly. That's when I started kind of picking apart like what they changed and but th- actually on those VHSs they had these little uh, featurettes before each movie that said like what they did, mm-hmm. like how they cleaned it up and stuff and even showed some of the original model work and stuff. Those featurettes were cool, but that's how I kind of, like, started to pick apart what they changed in it. Yeah, because it was almost impossible. I mean, unless... I had a friend that had the VHS tapes. I never owned Star Wars until the special editions came out. I I didn't own it either. I had seen the original versions of it, like, just because family members owned it. I think my dad had it and stuff. But, yeah, yeah, I didn't actually own it myself until special edition. So, I guess, let's talk... Let's... So, what did... I mean... And it, that's the hard part, is I want to talk about what we enjoy about Star Wars, but once again, it's such, it's so embedded in identity. <laughs> like, not to say that we we revolve our identity around Star Wars, it's just, it's so embedded in childhood and nostalgia. What does it matter what we like about it? Because we can't separate ourselves from it. Yeah, no, it's like, just pretty much we like Star Wars. That's, yeah, all, that's we, about all we can say about it. And we can't be critical. I will say, as I... As I grew older, I realized Return of the Jedi is kind of a bullshit movie. It's not... It's it's good, and it's much better than the prequels, any of the prequels, but it's not... It's not the Star Wars vibe that I like from the first two. There's oh, yeah. something off about it. Oh yeah, well that's kind of the thing. Like the uh, for the first one for Star Wars, it was you know yeah. kind of like a one and done. Like they they had no idea it was going to turn into this big thing. So it's its own self-contained story, and that's why even though I love Empire, I think it's my favorite out of the original trilogy. I think the best movie out of them is Star Wars because it is its own yeah. self-contained movie, but. 
I, I don't know, like Empire, it you know, it got huge. They went a little darker with Empire, and then I think they went a bit lighter to get to that kid's demographic, and because at that point Lucas was making mad toy money, so he wanted all yeah. that toy money. Oh yeah, yeah. But I mean it's still yeah. a good capper to the trilogy. Like it's definitely the weakest of the three, but it does completely close up the story of the original trilogy and it's satisfying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it does have the best lightsaber battle. I will say that. Oh, yeah. That's about the saving grace of Jedi. But the rest is kind of, it's off. It, it's it definitely not... is. It basically, everything leads up to that final showdown between Luke and yeah. Vader and the Emperor. And that is a powerful scene. That is the, probably the best scene of the movie. But yeah, oh, yeah. L- that... getting up to that, especially the opening with you know Jabba's Palace again and then uh, all the mm-hmm. forest stuff, like it's... Uh, I don't know. It, it's hit or miss, really. It is. And I guess let's go back to the prequels real quick, because we talked about Phantom Menace, oh, yeah. but then we get to when we're 14, and we're... We get to like, the most forgettable Star Wars movie in existence. <laughs> Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. The like I barely remember what uh, happens in that one, and I saw it at least two or three times. It's it's a bunch of nonsense talk, followed by... like scenes that look like they belong in a video game it's oh like the yoda lightsaber ridiculous. battle i remember that one the yoda lightsaber it looks battle, like a little the, fucking uh, hamster jumping around the factory vignette oh where, god that's so um, bad oh it's so horrible see like, that's that the movie... only thing i remember about three scenes from that movie but ultimately it is just forgettable mm-hmm. oh completely forgettable complete like i remember i was talking to eric one night when the, uh, sorry i keep bringing up friends names but i was talking to our friend eric and I, it came out that he never saw Attack of the Clones. And this is right before um, I would have been Revenge like, no, of the don't Sith. need to. Was, well, no, I was immediately like, oh, my God, it's so bad. We need to watch it. So I went out. We went out to Walmart and I bought it so he could watch it to see how horrible it was. <laughs> like, that's how much I wanted him to see how horrible this movie was. Well, that's was. the thing. Like I said, I think I remember about three scenes from it. And I think they're the mm-hmm. worst scenes from the movie. Like, that's what stuck out to me was just how bad yeah. some of those scenes were. Oh, yeah. I mean, the rest of it. Was okay, so it's it's that, and then it's um Anakin and uh Amadaya's falling in love. Yeah, it's like ugh. montage, which is oh my god, it's like there's... their acting is very bad, but the dialogue is even worse. Like I I don't completely oh, yeah. blame them because there's not much they could have done with that. No, it's really like um uh, God who played uh christian oh hey, hayden christensen, christensen. Yeah. he's done good work, but he should not have been Anakin. He like uh. Fucking, uh, what's that movie where he does the, uh, where he's the journalist? Oh, Broken Glass, Shattered Glass. Shattered Glass, yeah. He does really well in that movie because he kind of fits the character. Well, even, like, for a a whiny kind of teenage character, like, he can do because there was a movie he did with uh, Kevin Kline, Life is a House. He was really fucking good in that. And he played, like, a whiny-ass teenager. He basically played, like, an Anakin without any power. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, but as much as... It makes sense that Anakin's a whiny teenager. They really push it to the limits in these movies. Too much. He's fucking grating on you. Oh, he's horrible. Like, in the way that, like, Luke Skywalker himself, like, in the original trilogy, he was a bit whiny. He was a bit uh, yeah. unprepared for what was happening and a bit fighting against it at first before he finally, like, accepts his destiny. But mm-hmm. it, Mark Hamill was at least charismatic enough and likable enough and kind of, I, I don't know, I guess white bread enough to where, like, it was easy to follow along with him. But... Hayden Christensen, like, we already know that he's going to become dark. We're kind of waiting for it and expecting it. So him being a whiny-ass teenager is just like, oh, fuck you. You're, you're, no wonder you're evil. You're an asshole. Yeah, and and they press it so much that you never see him being likable. You never like Anakin. during Like, not even, like, in Phantom Menace, they tried to make him cute, which completely backfired. And killed Jake Lloyd's career. Oh, but he was, I mean. He, I mean, deservedly so. Between this yeah. and Jingle All the Way, fuck that kid. Oh, right? Oh, he's horrible. Oh, and he's a dick now. Do you ever see, like, the things where he goes to cons? He's just like, fuck Star Wars fans. Well, then again, everyone has been doing nothing but hating on him for the past, like, 15 years. Oh, no, so I... I can't blame him completely. <laughs> no, I'd totally be a dick, too. Oh, yeah. That's true. I'd be like, whatever, I got paid. Yeah, but just, there's no point in the prequels where Anakin is ever likable. Well, they tell you he's likable. 
they tell you he's yeah. likable because they tell you like, oh, he's a cute kid in the first one. In the second one, they're like, oh, well, you know, he he has all this power. He's a good Jedi or whatever, working on becoming a Jedi. And it, you know, Natalie Portman falls in love with him. Got to got to be worth something. And then in the third one, they just tell you that like him and Obi Wan have this great friendship and have been all all these adventures without showing any of it or showing them having any chemistry together. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, poor, poor Ewan McGregor. He he that comes really... out the best out of the the prequels. He does. He does because I actually never had a fucking problem with him in those. Like I think he was no, no. the best out of the the prequels. No, he was he was playing it right, and the movie should have been about him. Like it that's, really that, should have. That could have saved the prequels, but like I mean, and we're like the. He, if you haven't seen the Red Letter Media, like, hour and a half, like, takedowns of... Or, they are completely worth it. Yeah, it's a Red Letter Media, but they just... Uh, the guy just eviscerates all the prequels. <laughs> like, with... It, and, oh, and if Star Wars isn't your thing, he does the same thing with the Star Trek movies, so <laughs> feel free to take a look at that, too. <laughs> I feel those get a little more pedantic. I don't like him as much, because yeah. he's he's going way too deep into the Star Trek mythology, and, like... Well, he's a big Star Trek fan, so... <laughs> Yeah, like Star Wars is so it's more self-contained, yeah. so you don't have to have all this backstory behind it, That's which true. I like. I it makes it much more enjoyable. You seen that one for Baby's Day Out though? Whew. That's a good one. <laughs> uh. Anyway, but yeah, so by the time we got to uh, uh, what, what Revenge, of, Revenge the of the Sith? Okay, I've just... we were seventeen. Were we? God, yeah, yeah, we, we were seventeen. And see, that's the thing is that that one, I I think it's. I can't even. I don't know. I guess it's the best out of the prequels, but it is. And I will say, I, I will. I will throw us under the bus here. We came out enjoying it, and we praised this movie for a while but, without ever going back and rewatching. Oh yeah, it. yeah. I think we just, and I think we know exactly why we did that. Even during that time, yeah. we knew what happened. We were just like, "This is the best we're gonna get." <laughs> this is yeah. different than it's not as childish. They went a bit darker. It had some cool scenes. Like this is the best we're gonna get from George Lucas. We'll take it. And we'll and we'll claim it. It's the best. I will say it had some really powerful scenes. The best being um, when Anakin has to decide between uh not Dooku but uh the Emperor and uh Samuel Jackson. Yeah, and he ends up throwing Samuel Jackson out the window, and he just sits down, looks defeated. And he's just like, "I'll do what you want." And he's just like, "It's just." It's like it's over. Yeah, for him. well, that one and uh, the even though the fight is uh, fucking ridiculous in like a video game, uh, but just that actual scene where you McGregor just like screams, just like you were the chosen, one. like that was a good scene. Yeah, I again was. because of you McGregor for the most part. Yeah, but there are, there are powerful scenes in it. But I think I think it's not so much that we really loved it that much. I think we no. just accepted it. I think we took it. <laughs> we were just like, okay, George, that that's what you got for us. We'll we'll take it. That's you, it's you did you did good, kid. You, you did you did what you could. Yeah, that'll do, pig. That'll do. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's. And I, I don't want to push it too hard, but almost comparable to Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi had better writing going for it. Oh yeah, it but, had better writing and directing, and acting yeah, going for it. For I, it's pretty much for the most better on every level, but. I, I kind of like the dark nature uh, of Revenge of the Sith as opposed to the kind of lighter, you know, kid-friendly version of Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I mean, Jedi's still above it, oh, but absolutely. I would say they're the closest in terms of getting from the prequel to the the original trilogy. Oh, yeah. And so that brings us to the trailer and what we've already kind of discussed, that everyone's really excited for this movie. and Why? Yeah, I can't. I can't pinpoint a reason, aside from just pure nostalgia. I, yeah. I think not even just nostalgia. I think it's just it's there's something there. There's something tangible. They can finally look at something and be like, "Oh, this is from Episode Seven. I kind of know what this looks like now." Yeah, but like, there's so many reaction videos online of people just being like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! The Millennium oh, Falcon." Yeah. Speaking and of Red like, Letter what? Media, <laughs> did you oh, see the yeah, Rich yeah. Evans yeah. one? Yes. Oh my god, oh, that was amazing. It was great. I think that was pretty much the best thing that could have been said about it oh yeah because... absolutely uh, uh but anyway <laughs> uh, yeah. seeing the trailer like i watched it as soon as it dropped i mean i was excited to see it and i i liked it i, I like the tone of it i mean but there's not much to it yeah. it's like five separate scenes and it's just like short little five to ten second bursts but they really i but the tone i like the tone one thing i like the tone but it's not Star Wars. That's that's kind of what I was getting towards. Like the tone seems 
completely disconnected from any well, Star I mean, it, Wars it we've just, known. It feels like a J.J. Abrams film. Yeah. Like, basically, yeah, when, he, when he came out with Star Trek and people were like, oh, he basically did Star Trek by way of Star Wars, like... That, but he, yeah. that's what he's doing now. He's doing Star Wars by you know his way of Star Trek in a way. Yeah, and also when people talk about J.J. Abrams, like, oh, he did great with the Star Trek. I mean, he did great with the first Star Trek. He did not do great with yeah. the second. And Star even that, Trek. like, it's not like it was this end all be all amazing film. It's definitely not even yeah. one of the best Star Trek films. It's, but it no, was it's a, capable. Yeah, it's capable, and it's a good action movie. It's a good action adventure yeah. movie. Yeah, and that's... Which is why it got compared to, like, a Star Wars. Like, it was more of an action-adventure than, like, you know, more of the philosophical, scientific Star Trek universe. Yeah, and... And really, oh, I'm just... But I don't know. It it looks interesting. It... I don't know. Kind of? Yeah, it it looks interesting. I'm excited to see, like, what he does with it, but I'm not, like, super fucking soaked. I don't... I'm not raising my expectations as this is going to be an amazing movie, because it might not be. And I I can accept that. I don't care anymore. I mean, that's... And that's what I'm getting to. I don't think it can be an amazing movie, because... I think it can be a good movie. Yeah, I think it can be a good movie. I think I can enjoy it. I think it's going to be capable. I think it can be good, but it's going to be paying so much lip service to fans. It's going to happen. Well, and the I, same way, the same thing happened with Star Trek Into Darkness. Like, they had yeah. to play fucking lip service to fans. They had to give the fans what they want, and how did that work out? So, you know what, yeah. fans? Why don't you just shut the fuck up for a while? Why don't you just let the <laughs> just, man make his movie? He loves Star Wars. Let him make his Star Wars movie, and then see what happens. Quit quit bothering him. Quit giving him shit. Just let him do it, and then we'll see at the end. See, that's I think that brings up a good point, and uh, something that uh, this writer Yahtzee he does these uh, video game reviews that are really awesome. They're called Zero Punctuation. Oh yeah. But um, he says about uh, what is it Kickstarter that the thing about fan or the thing about people is they don't know what they want till they have it, and so playing off this nostalgia. Oh yeah, and then they know like oh well, you should have done it like this. Yeah, but playing off that nostalgia just brings rehashed stuff, and it's going to be disappointing because it's not what you remember. It's just based off what you remember. Yeah. And so it does, you can't, there's nothing original coming out. And I feel like that's what's about to happen with Star Wars is nothing original, like, nothing's going to be achieved. Yeah, I think is what I what I feel like I mean, is going to happen in the end. Again, I, I feel like I'm not that heavily invested in it. Like, of course I'm going to go see yeah. it. It's a new Star Wars. Of course I am. Am I going to be as excited for it as I was when I was going to go see Phantom Menace for the first time? Of course not, because I've seen the prequels. I know what can happen. I don't <laughs> yeah. think they're going to be as bad as that whatsoever. I, in fact, I think it's more than likely it's going to be a good movie. I, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to hold it up to the level of the original trilogy in my head. That I saw as a child, because I'm seeing this now as almost 30 year old adult. So I mean, it it'll be enjoyable. It'll probably tickle my nostalgia bone. It'll have some cool action sequences, some cool effects. That's cool. I'm fine with that. Even just looking yeah, at the trailer, I'm like, that is a well made trailer. That does exactly what it's supposed to do. It gets you nostalgic. Mm-hmm. It shows you some new stuff. It gets you excited about the movie. But uh, you know, whatever. I, I don't really care yeah. that much anymore. <laughs> no, exactly. And that's. That's what's so disappointing is I I feel like the Marvel effect is going to go into this movie where the hype is going to make it come out as a better movie than it was. Like everyone's going to be really excited about it and then forget about it in two months once the next big. Well, that's pretty much all major studios are about these days. They're about creating hype and creating franchises to where no matter what happens, they put out a new movie in this franchise. You're going to go see it. It's going to make a shitload of money. Yeah, they have yeah. to put ridiculous amounts of money into the budget and marketing and shit, but they make these big tentpole films to where, which is actually interesting because I don't know if you read, uh, I think it was, maybe it was Sony? No, it was Universal, I think. They uh, recently kind of wrote an article about how Universal had like their biggest year in a long time, profit-wise, and they had no big tentpole films, big sequels, anything hmm. over like a moderate budget. I think their highest budget movie is maybe yeah. 50 or $60 million. But they released Whoa. a lot of smaller films with like micro-budgets and stuff that made huge yeah. amounts of money, and they had their best year in a long fucking time. That's that's really awesome. I like... I, I... I like reading these think pieces about these big temple films, and it's eventually, they're talking about this market has to crash. It has to. Oh, yeah. People have got to get sick of it eventually. That's why most franchises and shit, they only go maybe three, maybe four films that they split the last one into two, and then they call it quits because they don't they don't want to overstay their welcome, even though most of them do anyway. Well, 
a lot of those that you're talking about that are splitting their last ones, those are based on books. Well, yeah, but not books that deserve to be split into two. Like, how the fuck is The Hobbit? No, no. Three or four films? I don't know how many they're at now. How is The Hobbit three fucking films? <laughs> uh, three films. But yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're splitting, like, the last books, and, like, yeah, they're stretching them out, but they can make as many Iron Mans as they want. They're gonna stop eventually, and they're, they're like, but they keep going back to the well. Marvel keeps going back to this universe well, where there is no more Harry Potter well to go from. Yeah, they split Yet. the last movie into two parts. <laughs> But they did not split any of the other movies. Like, that is that is the new thing, to split the last section into two movies to kind of milk the last yeah. piece. But these comic book movies don't have anything they have to milk because they can... They do have infinite universes. The The macro point I was trying to make is that these big temple films, the only thing it takes for them to crash in on themselves is a string of, like, three failed movies. Because that's going to almost devastate a studio and they don't even have to be like huge failures by most standards it's just the budgets get so inflated by like making them so big and by putting so much into the the marketing and shit all they have to do is just break even or not quite break even like three times in a row and it'll fuck them yeah and there's a yeah and the because that's why they're already maybe gonna reboot spider-man again because he just like didn't quite make enough profit with (laughs) spider-man 2 yeah and that's another thing like we have movies like spider-man 2 where by all accounts, it's fucking horrible. And people, it still breaks even and makes some then. Like, it's... This whole structure is so strange. Well, that was, and I just hope... I'm sorry, that was something else I noticed when I was talking about Universal. A Million yeah. Ways to Die in the West came out this year, and that was regarded as a Universal flop. It still made mm-hmm. back, like, twice its fucking money. It still made, like, over <laughs> $100 million worldwide. What kind of fucking universe are we living in? <laughs> this know. is... This is insanity. And uh, it's and that's that's the big hope that people keep writing about is there's going to be an implosion of the studio system and we're going to get the 70s back where just auteurs get to run like the the inmates get to run the asylum I, and it's going to be amazing. I but it's don't not, think that's going to happen. I don't think so. either. I think it's you might much. get studios like Universal that are going to like try to instead of focusing on Big Temple, but even like next year they have like Jurassic World and a bunch of other sequels uh. and shit coming out. But like still, if they focus on that or at least try to push out lower budget movies that are more original instead of just focusing on franchise and reboots, that's fine. I know we're going to have them no matter what. Just focus like anywhere from a quarter to half of your your efforts on like new and original <laughs> movies. I mean, what, like the Universal thing is a good point. I hope they kind of there's a little bit of attention paid to that model. But look at something like hopefully Inherent Vice, which is a new Paul Thomas Anderson. Like Paul Thomas Anderson is a fucking money machine with his movies that are that are small scale. Well, it's relatively relatively small. Scale, small. Not, like he's he's the one auteur in the system. I mean, you could argue Chris Nolan, but he's kind of a system within himself. I would say. Yeah. But that's I haven't seen Interstellar. By all accounts, it's great. Uh, uh, but it's, they said the same thing at Dark Knight Rises, so I, I can't yeah, trust Yeah, exactly. That. Well, basically, what I've heard from Interstellar is visuals, and it's technically a masterful achievement. Story-wise, yeah. dialogue-wise, not as much. Which you can yeah, say about c- just about every Nolan film. Yeah, I mean... Well, I don't want to get into Chris Nolan. Yeah, yeah no, that's, I'm that's tired for another discussion. Him. Yeah, and and so you have you have, like... The PTA is the only other person, and he's the only really auteur that's kind of in the system and can make what he wants. Yeah. And an inherent vice is getting nothing but across the board praise. And I mean, oh, yeah, and a lot of people will say that's just because it's PTA, but PTA is the best director in the system right now. I mean, yeah, there's a reason why. System- <laughs> it's not just like, yeah. oh, it's a PTA film, we're automatically going to like it. It's no, he, he makes masterful films. Yeah, and I just want that to do so well that people are like oh maybe you know we what, need to go back to this system you know like, what kind of scares way. me though yeah i guess he is the best what? throwback to kind of that 70s system of cinema yeah but uh what worries me is that inherent vice is supposed to come out tomorrow friday the 12th whatever sorry yep. whatever it's supposed to be mm-hmm. um but i looked and it's not playing at a theater in my town it's not playing yep. at a theater in san antonio it's not playing at a theater in austin yet i don't know if it's getting a, a limited release at first and then maybe the yeah. next week it'll come out but i was so disappointed yesterday when i tried oh, I to look up where i could see it and i could not see it anywhere oh i was i uh, like i uh, so uh, the place i live has two theaters 
And when I heard, well, I used to live here, there was only one theater. They now have a second one. Oh, and I, I was know so that. excited. Like, oh, there will be a wider selection of movies. They play the exact same movies at both theaters. Are they just like Neither at different them. sides of town? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's it. God damn it. <laughs> They're just at different sides of towns and they do. And one of them has a slightly bigger screen. Not an IMAX, but they call it the Big D. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> I bet they do. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty strange but <laughs> they're giving you that big a, d for a few extra dollars yeah that's pretty much it it's not quite imax and it doesn't make that much of a difference unless you want to sit really fucking close to where you're craning your is neck. it kind of one of those so, fake imax screens where like they tell yep. you it's imax but it's just like two feet longer not they don't claim imax okay, so it's not that quite that but it's essentially before. yeah that's a, it's essentially the same concept yeah. and they charge you more they just don't call it an imax screen but yeah, they play the same exact movie, so it it's pointless to have them. And I'm hoping over Christmas when me and my girlfriend are traveling, I come across a chance to see Inherent Vice. And I'm hoping it is just in limited release, just so they could get Oscars. Yeah, maybe like just nods. for that first week. But I'm hoping, like, if it is, then fucking next week it better be everywhere. Because uh, I've been waiting. I've been so fucking excited. I am so much more excited for Inherent Vice than I could ever be for Star Wars Episode Seven. Oh, I know. <laughs> and like, and the... I'm, I'm fucking... I'm, just foaming at the mouth that i can't see it yet oh like what because you said you watched the star wars trailer immediately i waited like two or three days before i was like oh yeah that came out i should probably uh, well, i kind of want to watch it inherent vice the moment i saw that was up i i almost i watched it like myself. three times in a row <laughs> oh it's so it's so ridiculous it looks so yeah. goddamn good so ridiculously good i have i could not be more excited about this movie yeah and even and, like uh, the dissolve put out the review the other day all i did was yeah. i opened it up i saw that it was essential viewing i said of course yep. and then yeah. i looked at the star rating and then i just kind of scrolled through and i was like i'm not gonna read a word of this like i just wanted to yeah. see what they gave it yeah i've read the book and i still don't want to read the review because i just want to be i want to see it for myself i want to see what paul thomas anderson is going to do because he has He's never disappointed me. He is absolutely not, and he since... does make films that divide some, even his core audience, because there are people that don't yeah. like Magnolia or Punch Drunk Love. But mm-hmm. you know, whatever. But he still makes masterful movies, and he tries something different every time. Yeah, they are still they are still a vision. They are not cookie cutter. They are like I mean, even like Mike M- Miguel Gondry. Yeah. He, I mean, he makes amazing movies. He makes Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind. He also makes Be Kind Rewind to pay the bills. He does, but I, it's enjoyable. It's just not great. Yeah, I it, like Be it, Kind. It just, it just missed the mark. It, it, it didn't focus on the right things. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, I mean, he also did. Uh, what was that other movie? I didn't realize he did till the other day. Uh, didn't One he do second, Green gonna... Hornet? Green Hornet. That's yeah. it. That was that to pay movie. The bills. <laughs> That was definitely the pay the bills. I was like, because like when I found that, I was like, really, Green Hornet? Like that movie was so not whimsical and just. I mean, it was. I I. It was shot I hesitate well. To even, it was shot well. Like it had some jokes, but even as a Seth Rogen movie, it was pretty tame. And oh, yeah, it was pretty, absolutely. It, it just like seemed the, like it was a mix of the studio, the director, the writer, and star. Like everyone just kind of had conflicting ideas, and they all yeah. got put in there together, mixed up. Yeah, and I did find out that um, while he was making this, he was also making "Why Is the Tall Man Happy?" his uh, his documentary about. I haven't seen it, but I've heard great. I've heard mixed things. I've heard great things and bad things, mm-hmm. or slightly bad things. Not a bad thing, but it's Mikhail Gondry in his interviews with Noam Chomsky, but he illustrates them as if they are from his perspective. So it's like, it's not. It's not like Chomsky's. Wait, so Chomsky pros- by way of Gondry? <laughs> yeah, and it's it's a comment on how you, you like. It's not about trying to understand Chomsky. It's about Mike Mikel Gondry trying to understand Chomsky, and so you're getting so it like more from how his. he interprets it and his own mind and world. Yeah, yeah, which is such an interesting idea, and such, and that's another. When you talk about auteurs, that's an auteur vision. And Mikel Gondry mostly works outside the studio system, but every once in a while he goes back to make some money. Well, yeah, you got you got to make that. You got to do the big nuts. So you can make the little nut. Yeah, yeah. And lately, at last he made Mood Indigo, which I highly recommend everyone see. It's 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 whimsical and it's wonderful. Yeah, it's on my list. I've been playing catch up for movies I haven't seen this year. Yeah, no, I got lucky. I was in New Orleans during the French Film Festival and got to see that one. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I totally want to uh, oh, meet so up good. with you and go do that next year. We should we should definitely try that. I would love yeah. to do that. So, uh, episode seven. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> Star See Wars. how easily this is. This is a microcosm of what's going to happen with Episode Seven. You're going to be excited. Like, I mean, not we weren't even excited about, it, but you're gonna you're gonna talk about it for a little while, and it's gonna fade because it didn't matter in the end. It's it's a capable adventure oh, movie yeah. that at best is good. I tell you what, though, will, you know what I'm more excited about? Ryan Johnson directing this <laughs> the Episode Eight. Writing and directing Rian. that. Yeah. Isn't it Rian? Rian, whatever. I call him Ryan yeah, Johnson. Yeah, sorry. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, Rian Johnson. I, that's... Uh, see, I'm also conflicted about that one. I did love Looper, but it wasn't Brick, and it also wasn't The Brothers Bloom. It was kind of... It's it's getting more into... It was it was a better action movie than most action movies oh, yeah. that have come out in the last decade, 15 years. And it has a lot more ideas going on than a lot of it action does. movies. Yeah, and I... Definitely extremely commendable for that, but Star Wars, I feel there's, it's it's the same problem with Marvel, that there's so much money going into it, you can only stray so far. Oh yeah, like, uh, absolutely. The, the argument of why Edgar Wright probably got kicked off Ant-Man, because we don't know why he did, but probably because he wanted to stray too far, and Marvel's like, ugh, you need to dial it back, man. Well, yeah. That's the guess. Well, that's the thing, is that you need those directors that can work within the Hollywood system and still kind of make mm-hmm. their own, like J.J. Abrams, he can do that. Like, he is marketable yeah. enough to where he can kind of get his own say, but still work within the studio system and do what they want. Rian Johnson, yeah. I, I don't know, I think he might be able to. I, he... He's gonna do. I think he'll do a lot. I think he'll do better than J.J. Abrams just because. I'd make a Star Johnson. Wars movie. <laughs> I think. I think. See. Uh. Yeah. Maybe. I think he'll make a more interesting Star Wars movie. I think J.J. Abrams is gonna make the Star Wars movie people want. But once again, going back to that conversation about Kickstarter, people don't know what they want, and so when you give them what they want. They, they. I mean, it doesn't bring anything to the table. It's just rehashing. It's yeah. just, it's just making the same thing again for people to like for a minute and be like, oh, I remember this, and that's that's new and cool, and move on. Yeah. Like, there's nothing. Nothing feels. I just, I don't understand it. I don't. I kind of wish they hadn't done this. I kind of wish they had left Star Wars alone. But I understand well, it's not, a money maker. Yeah, they're, they're never not, going you can't to. leave it alone. No, it's. It's here for a long well, time. Well, and also, again, like, th- these movies, like, especially this one, this is going to be aimed the most at adults and children at the same time, I think. Yeah. But, like, with the Clone Wars series and everything that's on TV all the time, like, that gets kids into Star Wars, even if they haven't seen the original trilogy or if they even haven't seen the prequels, kids that are even younger than that now, like, there's mm-hmm. always going to be pe- kids into Star Wars and people into Star Wars because they, they oh, always yeah. have something. But going back to right. the hype machine real quick... I just, mm-hmm. I feel so weird about it because, again, I saw the Star Wars teaser. I was like, yeah, no, it looks good. I'm going to see it. It was well put together, a little teaser. But yeah. they're coming out for everything now, and they're coming out like over a year before the movie even gets released. And everyone just seems to be so excited about everything, like the Jurassic World teaser. I could give and a why, fuck. Why is anyone excited about Jurassic World? Do they not see the last two? Well, not like, only that, is, but just like... I. People just seemed so excited about it, but I looked and like if you saw the big kind of like Dino Croc thing coming out of the water, that CGI looks so bad. It looks so oh, awful, even... but no one even mentioned that. Really, I didn't even. I never watched. And even it. like Chris Pratt, who I do like, I, I think he's a great actor, but like his, I don't know if it's just his dialogue or his delivery, but it was fucking atrocious. Like I have no <laughs> hope for Jurassic World. I. I, don't, I never understood why people were excited for it in the beginning. Even like, people Jurassic... seem excited about the new Terminator. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That came out the other. What is this? <laughs> like, I've. Why are people? Uh... And again, those and movies that's... don't come out till next year. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same thing with the Dark Knight Rises. I mean, that movie, and I still have yet to find someone that naturally enjoyed that film. I have never seen more hype on social media for a film. Not like in my circle, but out out there in general like i was led to believe it was going to be this amazing thing i watched it and i have never been so underwhelmed and so bored during i mean i have been more bored during a movie but i was not during a batman movie not during a batman movie like even the batman movies i don't like as much i had more fun during like this was and this was something people were claiming was wonderful and great they still are like there's never really been a backlash against it there and it, I mean, there's selective backlight, but like I said, I have still have not met anybody that naturally enjoyed that film that did not say no. That movie fucking sucked. 
I, that's the only thing I've ever heard about it. Well, uh, maybe it's just the Christopher Nolan thing. They just like, oh, well, you know, did, he, it's Christopher Nolan he makes great movies, right? So it was a great movie, right? Yeah. I mean, I feel like the same thing happened with Inception. And Inception is good, but it's not. It's not great. It wasn't. It didn't boggle my mind. It didn't change my worldview. I was like, oh my god, this is. It's like putting ideas. Simply putting ideas into movies counts as greatness now that people are so used to such bland milk toast as and not to sound so like i'm on a pedestal or anything like i'm so above these kind of things but i feel like everything's so bland now that people are just confusing capability for greatness because of the previous like the hype machine leading into it and just everything surrounding it and also the increased price of tickets i feel like people want to like things more so they don't feel oh, like they're, they're blowing money, their money on it yeah yeah they're blowing a lot more money than they used to on these things and i feel like that can't help but play into it a little bit well not only that but also when there is such a giant hype machine and especially the way kind of like nerd culture has gone and everything to where it's such yeah. a mainstream huge thing i think mm-hmm. like if the general consensus is this thing is awesome or we're excited about this thing everyone just kind of jumps on board without giving it a second thought so like you know if you hear you know gardens of the galaxy is like the greatest fucking movie of the summer you're going to go to it and you're going to be somewhat influenced by it i enjoyed guardians mm-hmm. of the galaxy i thought it was a good movie but it's not the end-all be-all. It's definitely not perfect. It has just as many flaws as all the other Marvel movies. It has an underwritten main villain. It has mm-hmm. d- kind of poorly done like, oh, we are good friends now that they just beat you over the head with in the third act. And, yeah. you know, it has to serve the greater Marvel machine too much. So it's the same as any other yeah. Marvel movie. It was good. It's better than average, better than some of the other ones. But it's not the greatest movie of the year or anything. And that's that's what's happening now, is that people are so used to things being mediocre to to a little bit less than to maybe a little bit better than that anything comes out that, that's actually just good. They they think it's something amazing, something new's happening. Like, oh my god, the, the, the game's been changed. But no, it's, it's the same thing. It's just a little bit different packaging, and someone took a little more care with it. Oh, yeah. It's like uh, like for you with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I still haven't seen that yet, but yeah. you're like, it's good, but it's not as great as people say. Uh, Captain America mm-hmm. the Winter Soldier, I finally saw that. That was really yeah. good. It was much better than I thought it would be, but it's still mm-hmm. not as good as people say it is. <laughs> See, that's... And that's... Uh, I feel like that's so common now, and it's, it's, it's disappointing, and it's going to happen with Star Wars. It's... Uh, I don't know if I feel like Jurassic World's going to flop. I mean, it's going to make its money back in spades, but I think it's going to I think it's going to get bad reviews. Yeah, is my initial it's, it's, judgment. And also the Terminator film like I I don't think Ugh. there's any possible way it's going to get good reviews. And just that's the thing when I hear people saying like, "Oh, it looked so cool and everything, like the future looked like shit." There was like a, a bus flip, a generic bus flip on a bridge oh, that really? just looked like uh. absolute horse shit. And the timeline just seems so fucking confusing. Like, I, they were going to spend the majority of the movie just trying to explain to a general audience what the fuck is going on. Yeah. I think it's just going to yeah. get in the way of the movie how much they're going to have to explain how fucking confusing this story is. <laughs> but it's got Arnold. Remember, he was in T2. It was awesome. I mean, ignore T3, but he was in T2. Yeah. <laughs> uh uh, but yeah, see, that, that's what happens when we talk about these franchises and these tentpole films and these blockbusters and all the hype going on around it. We get kind of like, ugh, we get down about it. But then we start yeah. talking about, like, the new PTA film and we're fucking, like, <laughs> giddy like a little kid excited for Star Wars. Like, that's our Star yeah. Wars now, is actual yeah, good, well-thought-out, smart films. Yeah, we're we are adults that that don't just like popcorn films anymore but many of the adults out there that's all they watch yeah. like oh i can still enjoy well, popcorn films no they're enjoyable yeah. but i need more they're not they're not the end all be all like it's just i think i think a large section of the populace just doesn't go to movies anymore and so they only they are only aware of these large films like uh when i when i'm talking about the pta trailer and going back to our friend zach I went over to his house. And I was like, "Oh my god, have you seen the new PTA? Tra- have you seen the trailer for Inherent Vice?" He's like, "No, what's that?" I was like, "Oh, I forgot you. You might not know about that." Oh yeah, like, I hit just... that that roadblock all the time. I just like <laughs> any time someone talks to me in random conversation, movies come up because that's what I talk about a lot. And I'm just like, yeah. "Oh, I'm excited. I'm gonna go see this." And they're just like, "What are you talking? What are these movies?" 
I was like, yeah. how, oh, everyone doesn't know this? Everyone doesn't follow movie news and, like, what movies are coming out on a constant basis and read reviews? <laughs> that's yeah, weird. See, that's the strange thing, is that we we are the nerdiest. <laughs> I'm not, not going to make that grand claim, but we are nerdier than a lot of the people out there that are excited for Star Wars, simply because... Or we're geekier because we're film geeks. And yeah, we're we're obsessed with film. We follow, we search out for films that aren't just you know at our local m- multiplexes. We we want to yeah. find the films that are a little bit harder to find because of course we're even going to see those big blockbuster films. We're going to see those too. That's fine, but we want more. We want everything. <laughs> yeah, we and and we want quality. And I think people have kind of forgotten what quality is. Because there's not a lot of quality in the multiplex anymore. Not in the multiplex, but they are still releasing quality films. Because in going over oh, yeah. the films I've seen this that, year oh, and the a... films that I still need to see, 2014 has been an awesome year for movies. Oh no, it's been it has been a great great year. I I would never say anything less. But most people don't know that. Most I mean they might still claim. Like oh Dawn yeah, of because of, of like Edge of Tomorrow, these... Guardians of the Galaxy, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, X Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so most people would say the same thing, just not for the same reasons. And I will make the claim not for the right reason. <laughs> they, I mean, they're they're just enjoying film on a different level, and that's on a, okay on a, on a superficial level, on the surface level only. Yeah. But that's and that's why I really want Inherent Vice to do extremely well because it's supposed to be this comedy. It's supposed to it's supposed to be like I'm hoping. Well, I there's think something it, I think it'll be like a in. Boogie Nights level hit for him. Because I think yeah. since Boogie Nights, which I think was like his real breakout hit, and it was kind of like funny as well as like, you know, a more adult oriented film. Yeah. Like after that, he kind of did more experimental stuff. He still was mm-hmm. seen as a master. He still made money on all of his movies. He still has his core fan base. But I think this will be probably the most mainstream movie he's done in quite a while. Yeah. And. Or at least I mean, generally even, acceptable. Even, I was going to say, like, even putting PTA in the mainstream category, because I would say one of his more mainstream films is There Will Be Blood. And that's not, like, I mean, that's very Kubrickian. Well, I think if maybe, if anything, way. that's more of, like, an Oscar thing. It's like when you get nominated for an Oscar, people are like, oh, I guess I got to see this. People say it's good, right? It's going to get nominated for yeah. an Oscar. That's what the general populace does when something gets nominated for yeah. Oscars. So, like, oh, I guess I got to see that. Well, I'm just saying it's it's. But again, one of his... there will be blood. Opens up with like 20 minutes of no dialogue. So that's true. It, I mean, I guess Punch Drunk Love is really his most mainstream film. If you get down to yeah, it. but like, I, that's, a lot that's of people still don't to get that too. But yeah, I fucking love yeah. Punch Drunk Love. Oh yeah, and the master, like even like oh my god, even the even the Oscars didn't recognize the genius of the master. That's how that's how next level that movie was. Oh, yeah. I will uh, that movie. If, I mean, I know it's still highly critically lauded, but it really needs a reappraisal. <laughs> but it, goes it back needs to more, it. and I'm pissed that it doesn't have it. It was, it was the best movie in about a decade. That I, I find that movie so challenging and so. It has so much atmosphere. Every scene, like every single frame, could be a painting on a wall. It is. It's an amazing, amazing film. Absolutely. And, and it just it. it it never got much credit for that outside of a small critical circle. And it's it's horribly well, that's disappointing. Thing too, and for being a long film, because it is like about two and a half hours long, I yeah. really couldn't find anything that you could take out of it to shorten it down. Like it, every yeah. single scene, every single moment in it feels like it needs to be there. It's, 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 it's close to a perfect film and nobody saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Not even... And it didn't get a nod. It didn't get anything. It's well. It got a couple of nods, but it didn't get got, anything. It, yeah, it didn't get anything. Got a couple of nods, not many. Like, well, I not think even it just got director. acting nods. Yeah, it didn't even get a d- director or best picture nod, which is and, fucking ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous because it, I mean, I love There Will Be Blood, but it's much better than There Will Be Blood. It's, oh, yeah. it's. I. I mean, I would. It's definitely my favorite PTA movie. It's the one. I want. I would probably watch the least, but it is also. Well, you got to prepare the, yourself for that one. <laughs> oh, it's it's intense, and I, I guess, I don't. I want to start. I want to kind of wrap this up and put a bow on it. But I feel like people also, and I don't want to. I, I feel like I'm getting on a high horse whenever I say things like this. They don't want to be that challenged by films anymore. And the master is nothing if not completely challenging. Well, I mean, there's something to that, like. 
I think people would get offended if you say that to them. But yeah. that's true for the most part. Like, not all the time and not everyone, of course. But no, sometimes, yeah, yeah that, people say that. That's why they call them popcorn movies. They just want to go turn yeah. their brain off. Just es- It's escapism. That's what a lot of it is. Mm-hmm. They just want to go do that, enjoy it, and not think about the real world for a second and be entertained. That's fine. Yeah. I do that a lot, too. But I also want to be challenged because I, I do consider film to be an art form. And I do yeah. consider it... To, to be just as high as any other art form if done right. And I think that, like that's what I aim for. That's what I want to see as well. I'll see popcorn yeah. movies and be entertained and shut off my brain for two hours, but I'd love to be challenged by a movie and to come out of a movie still thinking about it, still thinking about it a week later. Yeah, and I feel like that's what Inception passed as. That, I mean, not to... Not to... Because people, people have such a weird obsession with that movie that they really enjoyed it. I mean, I feel like people are starting to die down that hype, but they came out with like, oh my god, this is so this is so mind-blowing. But it's not. It was a pretty simple film just told in these layers. Well, everyone was just like, it's so complicated and intricate. And I was like, well, it's intricate no. the way it's edited, the way that it yeah. brings these worlds together. But story-wise, like, no, it's pretty fucking straightforward, dude. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I mean, and once again, it's good. And but it's not. It wasn't really challenging. I didn't think about it much when I left. I was never like, "Oh my God, is he still in the dream or not?" Because I don't fucking care. Yeah. Like, did it, you, it, it uh, didn't matter. Did you listen to the new episode of the Canon? The podcast. Uh-uh. Well, they talked about Inception. That's the movie they were. Oh, doing. did they? Uh, Devin Faraci from oh. Badass Digest fucking loves Inception. He was Whoa. digging deep into it, finding all sorts of things. Where like some of it, I was like, "Oh, I hadn't thought of that before." Other stuff, I was just laughing at. But uh, Amy Nicholson <laughs> oh, was very against it. She was just like, "No, it's a technical achievement. It looks great. It has good visuals. But guess what? It's fucking empty inside. There are no characters in this movie." <laughs> I I want to listen to that really. I I'm excited for that cuz I definitely agree with her. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of an it's, it's kind of a void of a film. Well, I even went and voted on the forums for it and I was like, "No, absolutely it does not belong in the canon. Like it's a good movie. It has great visuals. It is a technical achievement, but it's not a great movie. It doesn't deserve it, it, to be it, in line with the greatest movies ever made." No. It I mean, yeah. No, you want who wants to why would you want to put that in there with like The Godfather or something? That's that's exactly. way that's way out of line. <laughs> that movie was good, and that's about it. Yeah. And once again, people, I think people overestimate it because because we get shit most of the time. Yeah, and so something even the least bit intricate comes out, and they're just like, "Oh my god, it's so challenging. I, it's so there's so much to think about." And no, there's not. It's really it's a very superficial movie. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, compared to fucking Grown Ups 5 or, you know, whatever else is coming out and whatever Adam Sandler or Seth MacFarlane movie is coming out in theaters. Yeah. No, it's totally challenging compared to that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, we're getting to an hour now, so... Yeah, I expected this to be like 30 minutes. <laughs> no, I thought we were dying out. Then we got into PTA and that just oh, yeah, that was, very that far straight. Oh, yeah, that us. Yes. Uh, yeah, so... So go see Inherent Vice. <laughs> <you are>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's... That's our Star Wars review. <laughs> Go see Inherent Vice. Uh, uh, just uh, real quick, would you just pick a favorite Star Wars scene? What's uh, what's one that stands out in your mind? You can take a minute. We can we can edit around. Oh yeah. Um. Well, I mean, depends on which movie. I honestly like probably my favorite sequence of events in the Star Wars movies is Luke's training on Dagobah and The Empire Strikes Back. The introduction of Yoda, mm-hmm. like, going through the training, him slowly learning to control his power, still kind of fighting it, still kind of being a bitchy teenager, but then slowly accepting his fate and dealing with his fears. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm going to go for a kind of odd one that no one, I don't, I, I don't hear it brought up too much in terms of favorite, but, uh, the, uh, trash compactor scene from episode four, and that's mostly oh, yeah. because it's so, By the way, you can like call said, it Star Wars, it's okay, just call it Star Wars. What I call it? Episode four. I... I mean, I guess it's okay oh. if you're, you're trying to get confusing, but I just I've I've never called it anything but Star Wars. Yeah, I just I just threw that out. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I don't care what I call it. I know. Uh, yeah, the trash compactor scene, and mostly, like I said, this these movies are so deeply rooted in nostalgia. And when I didn't own the films, that is the main scene I always remembered. And I also used to have like a little micro machine set that had the it was the Death Star, and it had a little trash compactor. That's so fucking cool. Play thing. I wish I oh, had that. Oh, it was so cool. Oh man, it was awesome. It, like it folded up into like a Darth Vader helmet. It was it was great. I remember those kind of micro machine things. Yeah. I had a bunch of Star Trek ones. I just never had Star Wars uh, ones. Oh man, I had I had like two or three of the Star Wars ones. I was obsessed with them. But but yeah, the trash compactor scene because like I said, Star Wars is nothing but 
just innate nostalgia, and that is what I had the most nostalgia for growing up. Anything else to say? Uh, I mean, honestly, like, we kind of, I guess, ripped on Star Wars a little bit, but you have to understand that it comes from a place of love. Like we still love it because we grew up with it. Like I watched uh, star Wars a couple months ago. And then uh, a few weeks later, watched the empire strikes back and then watch return of the Jedi. Cause I still have the original versions on VHS and Mm. I still fucking enjoyed every one of them. I still really love those movies, but it's just, it doesn't mean the same thing to me as it did when I was growing up. It's been too tainted by too many things. It's, it's not the thing that, thing that Noah I feel like people aren't saying is that Star Wars is not sacred and it's not it's we it's know it's a not cash sacred. machine yeah it's it's a franchise it's, it's a business yeah and I think people are kind of people are getting that confused well, and I think that's where a lot of the hype is coming I've from. never understood the whole oh George Lucas wrecked my childhood and blah 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 like whatever I understand for a while he made it hard to see the original versions of the movies which was a dick yeah. move but you know whatever yeah. the movies are still there you still grew up with them you still seen them that doesn't take away from that just you know right. watch the original versions or don't watch them you still have them in your head you have them memorized you don't need them <laughs> <laughs> like it's a cash machine. That's what it's always been. It's about selling toys. It's about making money. Like it, it's never been sacred. It's never been sacred since like all the books came out, since the prequels came no, out, since all yeah. the TV shows came out. It's not sacred. It's a fucking business. Yeah, and that's about all there is to say. Go see Inherent Vice. <laughs> <laughs>